It's an old idea. Find yourself a big engine, clothe it in elegant bodywork, and customers will beat a path to your door. At least, that's the theory that Peter Monteverdi employed when he started his career as a luxury car builder. But of course, everyone has to start somewhere. Monteverdi's father ran a successful car dealership and repair shop, so it was natural when he was only 17 he should design and build his own sports car based on Fiat 1100 components. But this was no impoverished kid building a special. By the age of 19, he'd bought his first Ferrari. His father died when he was only 22 and he had to take over the family business. But he was very successful at converting farmer customers into clients for Gran Turismo cars. And he soon became the youngest ever Ferrari importer into Switzerland. But his true love at that time remained racing cars. By the end of the 50s, Monteverdi had his own racing team and they were building these Formula 2 cars. In the end, they built 23 of them, sold to various customers. But his main interest was then in Formula 1. He designed and built his own chassis and with Porsche power, he was ready to go racing. However, on the car's first competitive outing at Hockenheim, oil sprayed onto a rear wheel, he lost control, hit a retaining wall, was thrown out, and the car then somersaulted on top of him. He ended up in Baal Hospital for several months, and that was an end to his racing career. So it was back to the boring old business of importing Ferraris, some of which, like this 1964 330 model, he still has in his collection. But there was soon a clash of opinion with the Italian company's charismatic founder. Sometimes is Mr. Enzo Ferrari very difficult. He will not accept when I say the car must have automatic transmission or power steering. He is not unable to understand this because he say we must have 12 cylinder, a lot of noise and sport cars. This is not true because the cars, the, the, the man who is willing to buy an expensive car is normally in this time before old and he is not young and he like sport cars but he need also comfort and comfort is in a sport cars when you are old man you must have an automatic transmission. The solution? Develop a sports car of his own. This prototype was unveiled at the 67 Geneva show and set the framework for future models. Beneath the sleek shapes of most of the Monteverdi cars lay a chassis like this. Relatively simple, square tube, but immensely strong. And into the chassis, Monteverdi slotted the well-proven Chrysler V8 engine around six and a half litres in varying states of tune. He usually used the torque flight automatic transmission that would handle all that power reliably. Although the prototype did make it into limited production, Monteverdi's most popular model was the 375L, launched in 1968. At 2 plus 2, it used the same engines but in a longer wheelbase, and it came closer to achieving the aim of a more refined Ferrari alternative than the original design. A variety of body styles followed, including a saloon and this convertible called the Palm Beach, which appeared in 1975. In common with the other versions, the interior was well trimmed, but rather functional in comparison with some of the car's competition. Customers were less likely to be disappointed by the car's performance. Road tests regularly achieved 0-60 times of 6 seconds and top speeds of over 160 miles an hour, though I well remember throttles jamming wide open on one example at very high speed on the test track. The company's most ambitious project was the mid-engined High, which promised even greater performance, though few were actually made. Oil price rises were making the environment for sports cars somewhat hostile, so Monteverdi turned his attention to off-road machines. The 1976 Safari was based on international harvester components and was an attempt to introduce more luxury to this market sector. The inspiration was again a disagreement with the manufacturer whose cars he was importing into Switzerland, this time Range Rover. We spoke together we look what we can do, and I say, listen, your Range Rover is not bad, but first, you need automatic transmission, second, you need a higher performance engine, and third, you need, very important, four doors. 
So Monteverdi went ahead and designed a four-door Range Rover, and he was soon offering conversions several years before the factory's own four-door car reached the market. You have to admit, it looks very similar to Range Rover's production model. Monteverdi's later cars were really coach-built versions of larger manufacturers' models. The Sierra of 1978 was essentially a restyled American Chrysler, and the Tiara was a modified Mercedes 450. That was the last Monteverdi car production ceased in 1982. Type approval and emission legislation was making car manufacture in handfuls an impossible proposition. The factory became a museum to include Monteverdi's and a collection of American, British and German sports cars, well over a hundred in all. As to the future, Monteverdi's design activities continue and he claims to have several new concepts on the back burner, waiting for the right time or for another manufacturer to show interest.